night before the D-Day beach landings was pitch black and quiet in the small, sleepy village of St. Marigree in rural Normandy. Despite its small size, it was positioned at the junction of five departmental roads, making it a critical piece of terrain to capture on the road to Paris. As the low rumble of Allied aircraft reached Nazi positions in the village, the sky began to light up with anti-aircraft fire. Thirty paratroopers leapt from their small cargo aircraft, with most landing in St. Marigree's Church Square. The battle raged for two days. Seventy-five years later, I stood in their footsteps, remembering their losses and celebrating their victory. Can I get in on this? Yeah. It means that you guys were in an airborne unit prior. Does jumping into Normandy during this anniversary hold a special resonance, or can you guys explain how it feels to you doing this? Oh, uh, so Great. many emotions. emotions. Hits you right here, man, because you think about all the all the history during the whole process. You know, thinking about it, and that's the whole reason that we did this to honor those who came before us and did this. It's happy. Uh, a lot of people ask me about my um, sweetheart badge. Um, people don't really know what it is. It's actually uh, when the soldiers went to war, they gave the sweetheart, the lover, the wife, the girlfriend, uh, uh, the badge, just to say, I'm going to come home to you. I love you. And there we go. It's just trying to make sure everyone keeps the history alive because otherwise it's going to die with all the veterans and I don't want it to. I don't want people to forget. I want everyone to remember it because it was such an important part of history. Great city, I'm a great state of Mississippi. Mississippi. <laughs> is, uh, is this your first time back, sir? It is. From a little overwhelming? Yeah, it's all I wanna I wanna show you how miserable he is. This is what we're dealing with. <laughs> That's awesome. Let me tell you this, he's kissed more women <laughs> than I think in two days. Well, since we got here on the third, then you have your entire life. <laughs> huh, yeah, that makes a trip worth it, right? <laughs> Private John Steele of the 82nd Airborne Division was one of the brave paratroopers who leapt into the Norman sky that night. He was hit by shrapnel shortly after he began his descent, rendering his leg useless right before his parachute canopy caught on the church tower, stopping his descent short and leaving him completely exposed to the enemy forces below. John Steele spent two and a half hours hanging from the church steeple. After trying to cut free with his knife, he dropped his rifle and played dead. It was his only choice if he wanted to survive. Later, he was cut free by a soldier named Rudolf May. His wounds were treated and he was taken prisoner by the Germans. John Steele wasn't a man built for captivity. He escaped the Nazis only three days later, where he rejoined the Allied forces. To this day, a parachute and paratrooper hang from the church's steeple in remembrance of John Steele. I'm here to celebrate the 75th anniversary of D-Day. What's it mean to you personally? Uh, it means a great deal. Um, I, both my granddads were in World War II, one being in the Europe theater and one being in the Pacific theater. And I'm, I love learning about anything World War II, anything history, and being able to be here, celebrate that, and learn more, see where things actually took place, it means a lot. The Battle of Carrington took place over the course of six days, starting at the onset of the invasion on June 6, 1944. 
The town sits at the crossroads between Omaha and Utah beaches and was a must-win battle for the Allies. The fighting was intense for the 101st Airborne Division, known as the Screaming Eagles, and they paid dearly, with high casualties before eventually emerging victorious. Et on peut applaudir le peloton également des femmes qui arrive, car il s'agit aussi de rendre hommage aux femmes qui ont participé énormément à la réussite de ce département. On va mettre For the 75th anniversary, modern-day soldiers from the 101st Airborne Division remember and celebrate the battle alongside World War II veterans and the local French people who are still thankful for their sacrifices to this day. Town's streets are packed and victory is in the air. And um, why are you here today? Because I served with the 118th Evacuation Hospital during 44 and 45, landing out here at Omaha Beach and ending up down by Czechoslovakia. We had a mobile hospital that took care of emergencies only. We moved all the time. We were in tents. And we felt that we saved lives. Our, li our life was a little different. We were saving lives. Well, how does it feel to be here now? Well, I can't tell you, honey. It's very emotional, Yeah. but very thankful because I feel a great peace here. Even though we paid a big, big price for it. I'm, I'm so thankful. This is my first time it's back to northern uh, so France. Oh, wow. It's got a little different now, huh? Oh, so different. But it's very emotional, too, honey. I remember so many young faces that didn't make it. They paid the price. When President Franklin D. Roosevelt announced to the nation that we were invading Normandy, he said, they fight not for the lust of conquest, they fight to end conquest, they fight to liberate. 75 years later, the people of Normandy are free, the people of France are free, the world is free because of their sacrifices. That was beautiful. Mm -hmm. This like is it? my grandpa. Oh, okay. I love that song. Three days ago. Well, happy birthday. Happy belated birthday.